On this episode of Woodwalkers. Communication is huge. It could save somebody's life. Communicate, let's go! Teamwork is all about this challenge. Remember, I want you to communicate. I didn't hear you when they were pulling up, telling them that's good or bring it up. Hold it, cut it. Good. Okay. Oh! We got a dead man on the ground. He's not hurt anymore. All right, set her tight. Set her tight. No, no, no. You didn't pull your braces out. Everything about that was wrong. You see what happens when you don't communicate? You spent 30 seconds on that damn nut. Who feels like they're ready to compete? A few weeks have passed at SLTC, and now that the students are comfortable with climbing, they transition to the real work, learning to install cross arms properly and safely. Week four at SLTC, we're putting up cross arms. Friday, we get a competency test, so this week we're just practicing, working together, helping each other out, making sure we do it right. You're gonna get a little fun from here out. Takes your mind off of just climbing. They're actually gonna be doing something at the top. The first competency that we do in the PC is building a single arm and we show them how to build the arm and uh, send the arm up and install it. You don't want to get it too tight because remember he's got to bring it in, but you don't want it flopping down. Okay. It's an eight foot piece of wood. You see them all over town, you see them all through the city, you see them everywhere. They're wooden cross arms, have power lines on them. So we teach the guys how to hang them. That clove hitch is too high, that brace needs to be tightened. They have to learn how to tie a clove hitch on the base of the arm and then use the snub rope about three quarters of the way up the arm and the proper way to pull an arm up to them. Remember, grab the brace with one hand, left and untie with the right. And don't ease the knot off. Yank it off, that way it doesn't get caught in the box. Ready? Ready. Go. The groundmen have to actually pull the arm up onto the lineman's lap uh, after he gets a snub rope off. So it, there's a lot of work uh, for the groundman as well. Turn that belt, both hands. One, two, three, keep going, keep going. Hammer up. Today's the first day that they've actually got to work with their hand tools. So they're learning, you know, the adjustments on the tools, uh, where to put them, when to use them. All right, center, cut, center, cut. The instructors keep the pressure high during training. Eventually, each student will be evaluated on detail and time doing each task. I teach all of my guys that you're gonna be a groundman for probably the next two or three years of your life. They are gonna have the hardest job on the crew, and it's very important that you understand what your role is as the groundman. Crews can't function without groundmen. All right, I wanna see you guys do what I was doing. Communicate to one another so He's not sitting there thinking, well, he's going to do that, not me, and then both of you are standing there. These guys that are doing the groundwork have to communicate with the guy up in there. Same for the guy in there. He's got to communicate to the ground guys. With your time based, your groundman has to be your best friends. you got to get to know them well, and everything's got to be structured well. So. No, no, no. You didn't pull your braces out. Now, you see what happens when you don't communicate? Everything about that was wrong. Teamwork's kind of the backbone of line work. If you get out there, with a bunch of guys and everybody trying to do their own thing, somebody's gonna get hurt. Remember, I want you to communicate. I didn't hear you when they were pulling up, telling them that's good or bring it up. I got it. Well, we gotta work on being able to talk to each other and send the stuff up, bringing the stuff down. Pretty much we're all looking to see what's going on and anything we see that's not happening appropriately, we're able to yell out and work as a team to make sure everything goes smoothly and safely. Teamwork is what it's about, communication. You gotta be able to get along with each other. You gotta be on the same page. You've gotta have the same passion about doing the job. We've taught them the easy part so far, which is the up and down. Uh, we can train monkeys and all kinds of animals to go up and down with poles. But the money's at the top. 
this is what keeps the lights on. But, you know, number one thing is doing it safe. We got a big safety thing going on around here with these arms flying around. You know, from different sides of the pole, you can catch different things that one might not catch. Make sure we all walk away from this with uh, everything intact. Communication is huge. It could save somebody's life. You know, if a piece of equipment dropped off the pole, if they don't yell headache, it could hit somebody, break a collarbone, hit them in the head, break a neck. You could make a mistake and it could be fatal to any one person on your crew at any given time. So How about move your hand line down lower? Communication is, is very crucial. Think about what you got going on right there. I want everybody shooting for under two minutes. Come on, Marcus, grab it up here. My name's Caden Sanford. My friends call me Stu. I'm 21 years old from New York. I'm always chasing the adrenaline. I don't care what it is. And then I'll get my heart beating really fast and scare me just a little bit. I feel most alive when I'm doing stuff like that. I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, ups and downs. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, we just had a baseball family. Like 15, 16, that's when I got really big into baseball. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do right out of high school, but I knew I wanted to go play more baseball, so I decided to go play college ball. Just overthrowing too much, and I ended up tearing my labor in my second year of baseball. So I kind of like stopped everything, stopped in the dirt, and, uh, and that's when I really had to think about what I wanted to do in life. Me not playing baseball and not playing a sport anymore, doing that adrenaline type of stuff, it kind of like made me more like depressed than anything. I knew I had to go do something with my life. My uncle went to the school here and I had a few friends that came to the school and they all said they loved it and I figured I like adrenaline type stuff. I mean, climbing up a pole, working with wires, working with the hands. I mean, it really couldn't get much better than that. It was something that was outdoors, something that I could do and maybe enjoy. And uh, this is the best choice I've ever made with my life. It really is. I wish I would have came here right out of high school. I just love messing around, just having a fun time, hanging out with friends. But, uh, I have to buckle down, study. I have to do things that I've never liked to do. And being out in the pole circle, being disciplined, respect, it's everything about all that. And uh, it's some hard work, but everything's paying off. And uh, just being around the guys and working in a team effort, and I'm feeling really happy about everything. About a quarter of the way through their schooling, we do the single arm change out, and it's a time-related task, and we give them some practice time to where they can go up and actually practice before we time them doing it. Get that hard head all the way, all the way. Come on, you spent 30 seconds on that damn nut. Uh, it is a timed event, but we're looking for uh, locking the legs, getting a good working position, using the tools the proper way. All right, I want everybody shooting for under two minutes. One, two, three, go! Communicate, let's go! I like to use time, the stopwatch, to push them because that gets their mind off their hooks. It builds confidence, uh, but we're looking more for perfect positioning and stuff like that. Come on, Marcus, grab that up here! Smooth as fast. Don't get your hands Moving quick in your brain. The purpose of this is getting them, seeing them move on the pole, and how comfortable they are. 144, minus the points now. His washer wasn't square and he dropped the nut. Basically, we're just learning lessons about hanging the cross arms up top at 30 feet, and uh, some of us are doing time events, and tomorrow, Jim will be uh, timing us, and we have to do it under two minutes and 30 seconds. My time right now is two minutes and seven seconds, but I've only done it for about a day, so. Next week when we get into our double arm assembly, <laughs> we're gonna find out the single arm probably should have been a lot smoother. So, we'll find out next week after we let this kick their ass a little bit. Rock and roll. The double cross arm, it's just a bigger, beefier construction than a single cross arm. Double cross arm's a little bit different. There's a lot more to it. Now you've got two arms, you also got three different bolts that you're putting in it, you know, 10 different washers, four or five different nuts. 
a little heavier, a little more awkward to install. Once that arm gets up, they bring it up on the lap, they stab it in the pole, then they go on ahead and put the braces on. They lag the braces. They have to swap around to the other side. Meanwhile, the groundmen are tying the bare arm to the hand line to get it up to the lineman on the pole. And hopefully by the time he gets around the back side of the pole and is ready for that arm, it's knocking on his foot. The importance of being a good groundman is to save a lot of leg work for the people that are up in the air. And it's all about paying attention to what's going on. They need to be able to think five steps ahead of what these people that are in the air are gonna need. A good groundman knows what is gonna take place next before anything else happens. Take your time. It's very, very simple. I was nervous going into this. I've never been down south. I've been to Florida a few times, but I never lived down south. I got here and everyone clicked pretty fast and uh, my friends call me Stu and then we got Jacob here, big smart ass. He always calls me broth because he said I don't have the beef. <laughs> you got no beef, you got the, you don't have the potatoes yet, you got nothing yet, you're still broth, you gotta prove me something. <laughs> He thinks I'm from Canada, always saying A, because I live 15 minutes from Canada, so he's always making fun of me for that, but I just go along with it, you know? It's cool. That's always the biggest thing, it's like, who's next to me in the like, pole circle? You get to know them, you're up there reaching out, giving people high fives and working alongside each other. Two, three weeks in, we'll switch groups up, so you really get to meet everyone, and you get to know them pretty well. I mean, those are your brothers, you'll fight for them, you respect them, and it's gonna be a fun time getting to know them. All right, now we're doing the double arm test. We got three people on the ground, one man up top. Oh, the knots and everything, quote pitches, everything's gotta be perfect. If cross arm drops, uh, that's points off to him, so uh, he's really relying on us. Their job is just as important to the lineman's time, and uh, they have to understand when to pull, when to give slack, it's basically make or break for him. We're trying to get him the best time, so uh, we're gonna go as fast as we can, efficient as we can, get her done. You know, one wrong tie on those arms could affect 30 seconds on their time. Get that arm up, now. Nailed it. Teamwork is huge. Slightly down on your right, just a little bit. And these students have to be team-oriented, uh, safety-oriented. Tighten up that ball. Because they're going to be working on a crew with a foreman, other journeyman linemen, and they're going to be expected to perform. Spread them all. Spread them. Spread them. Wash your nuts. Spread them. Wash your nuts. Drop that on. Drop it. Drop it. Get out of there. Pull it and drop. 6.47. He got a deduction for going over six minutes. He handled himself real well. He was washing the square. Uh, he just went a little bit over time. Some of the bigger guys, they struggle with it because their feet are so much bigger. Like him, he got pretty big feet, so he struggles with it. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to watch out for a second. Yeah, we're about to drop one down. Jake is a return, so he's got six weeks experience over the other guys. So I kind of lean on him to kind of help the students out, you know, showing them uh, the, the, the most efficient ways of doing things. He's really fast, he's thinking ahead just constantly, he's just a real motivated guy. I do have a great bunch of kids, all the kids that come here are freaking awesome. They make me feel like I'm 25 again. But, Next week they're going to work on their times as far as hanging their arms at the top. Uh, but we're going to have a few little friendly comps in between uh, where they can race each other and that way that gets a little fire underneath them. The students start to feel the pressure as test day approaches. A small group of them have a friendly competition to help better prepare themselves. Who feels like they're ready to compete? I make sure your ass loses. I know you won't win. Oh, I definitely whoop your ass. If I I can't wait, we're gonna smoke them. We are, we're gonna smoke them. You guys ready? 
They're a little too slow. They're gonna learn today. They're gonna learn. 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 All right, guys, we're going to have a little friendly competition. You're going to put it on, you're going to take it off, set it on your belt, time stop. <laughs> I'm about to die. Horn Buck says I got that. It's going to give him a little advantage. Y'all get the 10 foot, then he's going to go. Hey, that works. Well, I'll be at 15 feet, you'll be at the top already. <laughs> you got this. When you're in a post circle, it's 20, 21 guys. And the boys that I've made a click with, they drive me, they tell me, if you, don't, if you don't speed up, we're gonna make you climb the 65 footer. And we're a tight knit family. Mark, set, go. Jake, he's definitely helped us out. If Jim wasn't around, he could show us tips and advice, a little shortcuts to be able to like make our time better or make things a little bit more precise. You're good now, back it off. Nice. Go ahead. Hey, I got the water from that to up. You got him? Yeah. You got a way to send that hard dead up too. Uh -huh. Jake, he's a return student. He's super fast, he's very safe, he climbs really well. He slows his mind down, speeds his body up. He's able to do that. And um, I would have to say probably is my top performer. There really wasn't any competition. I'm really impressed with this guy. He's probably one of the best students that I've had so far. Good job. <laughs> Could have went better. Thought I knew what I was doing. I didn't. That just shows me that I got more to learn and more determined to beat him next time. That's right, Jake, Stu, and Sean. We're the winners. That's all we ever do is win. We're pretty much like Ricky Bobby. Jake and Sean are probably my two top students. They climb with really good skill. Uh, they're fast, they, they just pick things up really quick. Jake, he had trouble with his indoor curriculum. He's more of a hands-on kind of guy. I love the outdoors. I like fishing, hunting, kayaking, mountain climbing, mountain biking, just everything like that. Since I was little, I wanted to be a welder because that's what my grandpa did, that's what my great-grandpa did. So I was like, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Well, my great-grandfather lives in Florida so whenever I would go down there, I'd be like, hey, Grandpa, when we go in the shop? It could be Christmas Day and everybody's opening presents. I'm like, Grandpa, when we go in the shop? I want to go to the shop. Let's go to the shop. That's where I wanted to spend all my time was out in the shop with Grandpa, learning how to weld. And the shop was right down the road, so we'd just hop in the truck or on the track and we'd go to the shop and we'd spend a couple hours just welding. My life before this, sports was all I really thought about. Sports and girls. <laughs> and uh, I get down here and People start like, you're not here for sports. You're here to learn about your career and to get a job. He's uh, back in full swing and uh, he's coming back, uh, knocking him down. He did real well on his test today. Um, I feel confident that he's going to just knock the ball out of the park. When these students get jobs in the field, they're going to be required to be able to save a hurt man on the pole. And the correct procedure for doing that is pretty crucial. You want to get that rope over his back, under his arm, and then with the other hand, you're going to want to reach, reach under, grab that dog tag, bring it back through, whip it around, do your timber hitch. I've been in the field for 21 years, and uh, I've never had to do it. It's like CPR, it, you know, when it's needed, you have to be there and be on your game and ready to go. I'm looking for a minute 59. You got it. Let's go, Cap. The clock is ticking. The Hurtman Rescue is a crucial component to the students' training. Brain damage sets in quickly. So being safe and efficient is key to saving a life. Over the arm, 
go over the top of the back. Over, now reach the other hand under, grab the rope. Five wraps on the hitch. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Hold it, cut it. Hold on to your rope. Hold on to your rope. Okay. Oh. Roger. You killed him. You killed Roger. We got a dead man on the ground. He's not hurt anymore. <laughs> uh, evidently, the knot wasn't sufficient. Dummy come crumbling to the ground. And from a hurt man to a dead man. I think you would have made it if, if that would have happened. Yeah, hey, you gonna hey, get this. In a training environment, failure is an opportunity to learn. These students will utilize the time that they have to perfect each task at hand. The hurt man is an important exercise to prepare the students for the unlikely scenario of a pole top Get rescue. Over, pull your knife out. Just like, no, no, on the end, on the end, yep. Get your knife out. Get eight. Get eight. Get down, 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 down. Yep. Three left. No, I got 311.97. Uh, yeah, this yeah, task yeah. requires three minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, he's in that time frame. Did a good job. Saved the guy. Real good.